Hi, this is Zivi Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. And speaking of books, I have two of my own books coming out this spring and summer. Princess Charming is a picture book, which debuts on April 19th, and Bookends, a memoir of love, loss, and literature comes out on July 1st, and it is truly a labor of love. I hope you'll pre-order, order, order, and join me on tour as I go across the country. You can find out more at zivyowens.com or bookendsmemoir.com. And you can follow me on Instagram at zivyowens because I always post about everything. Enjoy the show. Daphne Oz is the author of Eat Your Heart Out, All Fun, No Fuss Food to Celebrate Eating Clean. Daphne is an Emmy award-winning television host, New York Times best-selling author, natural foods chef, wife, and mother of four. As a co-host of The Good Dish, a new syndicated daytime cooking and lifestyle show airing daily nationwide, and the newest judge to join the cast of Fox's hit franchise, MasterChef Junior, Daphne is known to television audiences for her effortless, confidence-boosting recipes, healthy twists, and her delicious approach to living life in full. Daphne was previously co-host of ABC's The Chew. Her latest cookbook, Eat Your Heart Out, All Fun, No Fuss Food to Celebrate Eating Clean is a collection of 150 recipes free from gluten and refined sugar and full of flavor. The book details the simple five days on, two days off reset Daphne has followed after pregnancy and whenever she needs to renew healthy habits, lose weight, and feel great, her motto is taking good care of yourself should always be delicious. Daphne is a highly sought-after guest on shows like The Today Show, Good Morning America, The Rachel Ray Show, and Fox and Friends. She has also been featured in The New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, Reader's Digest, Glamour, Teen Vogue, Seventeen, Cosmopolitan, People, and Us Weekly. In addition to Eat Your Heart Out, Daphne is the author of The Happy Cook, Relish, and The Dorm Room Diet. She received her chef's degree from the Natural Gourmet Institute and is a graduate of the Institute for Integrative Nutrition. Daphne holds an undergraduate degree from Princeton University. She and her family live in Florida. I hope you enjoy this episode. I, by the way, referenced many times her website because I had previously been browsing it prior to my interview with her. So go to DaphneOz.com, D-A-P-H-N-E-O-Z.com. I just ordered her sweatpants and and a tote bag with personalization that I'm super excited about. Welcome, Daphne. Thank you so much for coming on Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books to discuss Eat Your Heart Out, All Fun, No Fuss Food to Celebrate Eating Clean. Thank you for having me. I'm thrilled to be here. Daphne, I'm glad that you finally that you joined. I was early to this Zoom. And so I had a chance to start shopping on your website. <laughs> and I'm like, she better log on soon because I've already bought like allegedly the comfiest sweatpants, the personalized like tote raffia whatever for my mom for Mother's Day, which is so cute. Oh I'm like, I'm like, how <laughs> this is very destructive. <laughs> I know. I'm well, I it, you would it would be destructive if those two things weren't some absolutely critical pieces to belong in your life. I literally just took those sweat pants off because I was like, I'm going on Zippy's podcast. I better put some real pants on, <laughs> but, but they are, when I tell you I have them in every color, I wear them constantly. I, I absolutely, they are, they are these Lialo T sweatpants, random brand I found over the summer a couple of years ago, and they just have the best cut. They're like a jogger cut, but they're light enough that they're still flattering and drawstring. So moms love a high waist and pants that won't fall down when you're bending over to get your kids a hundred times a day. So let me put you on to these sweatpants. I, I'm on. I already bought them in Navy. I sat there for like five minutes being like, Navy, oh, pink could be kind of fun. I don't have any pink sweatpants, but would those look good? And I was like, what am I doing? <laughs> I owned, I literally was just buying the cream ones over and over and over again because I love them so much. So but, uh, yeah, pick your color. Pick, I love you. Thank you for doing that. That's adorable. Oh my God. I'm like going back. You have great picks for like all occasions. <laughs> Wait, I want to talk about your cookbook, but I also want to talk about your empire-ish. You know, this whole thing oh you built with recommendations and content and everything. How did that all bubble up? And has it been in tandem with all the books and the shows and everything? Or did you always know like you wanted a destination for everything? Tell me about that. Well, look, I think, I mean, I do think just as you're speaking and so generously and kindly, thank you so much. I do, your podcast is aptly references the fact that moms have no time. So I do think a destination is always going to be just better because it just simplifies the process of like, I like what I'm seeing to help me figure out how to create some of that in my life. But that said, I I will say I started in media. I started uh, at a show called The Chew when I was 24, 25. And at that time, it was very much at the dawn of social media. I think 
like I very much learned about media when it was still, you know, TV and movies. That was where you really consumed content. And when that was the case, I think, you know, even in daytime, which I feel so lucky to have been a part of because it, you really get to be friends with your audience in a way that's so unique and so comfortable and just like consistent in a way that's so special. But at that time, that was like really where you got to consume the content. And there wasn't really a lot around that. Social media has blossomed in this way where now you are like, if if you like and trust the way that I cook and hang out in the kitchen, then yeah, you're going to follow me into my closet and you're going to follow me into my you know bedroom where I'm putting on my makeup and doing my skincare and whatever. And I think that that sort of 360 view of people that you appreciate in one vertical is something kind of novel about the way that social media has blossomed and the and the demand for constant content as a result of it. So I, I definitely wasn't like, a, you know, here's the architecture, here's what we're going to do. It was really more just a genuine, people kept asking me questions primarily about fashion and beauty content in addition to all the food stuff I was sharing. And so I started sharing more and more about that. And, you know, people started asking me really organically a lot, you know, to share a lot about the fashion choices I was making and the beauty choices I was making. Fashion primarily because I think seeing me get dressed as a size 8, 10, not a size 2, 4, the sort of, you know, classic look of uh, of what you've been used to seeing on TV, I think was really redeeming for people. They were like, ah, oh, I'm seeing how this looks on your body. Like, that's probably what it would look like on mine. Like, let me, you know, let me in on what you're looking for when you're buying or where you're shopping, things of that nature. And then I have four kids. So I share a lot about my daily life and my parenting and the choices that I make for my own family. And I think it's really wonderful and beautiful to be able to have that kind of very dialogue and depth of relationship with people that you don't know, you know, you're not having a chance to meet in person, but you have this wonderful friendship connection by virtue of how much you're, uh, you're giving and taking on the platforms. I love that. That is so great. Yeah. I recommend books, right? That's like my thing, yes. obviously, yeah, as yeah. you know. And uh, <laughs> But I had this crazy experience. This is totally off topic. We are going to talk about your book now, <laughs> where I went to Target with my mom to like pick up some odds and ends when I was visiting her mm-hmm. in Arizona. And I found these boots and I couldn't tell if they were ugly or cute because I, I'm not like the most fashionista forward anything. So anyway, I bought them and I put them on. I took a picture. I put it on Instagram. I was like, do you guys think these are cute or ugly? And like all these people went and bought them. And I was like, oh, okay, that's amazing. <laughs> wait, I love that. But by the way, that's like, that's the, you know, first of all, because they know and love you and they're like, well, if Zibby's wearing this, like, it must be amazing. I have to go get it. Also, Target is, is like, you know, Mecca. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Yes. But I also think it's, I really appreciate that too. Cause there are those moments where you're like, I think this could be cute, but maybe on someone else, like, does it work for me? Let me get some way in. And it's really, it, it's good. I hope you bought them. If I hope they're not sold out now. You can't get them anymore. <laughs> no, no, I bought them. I wore them all winter. I was like, wow, okay. If you guys like them, then I'm, I'm in. <laughs> I was literally walking my daughter to drop out this morning. And this woman in front of me was wearing like this out of a magazine outfit with like this very like, this like bright red furry whatever with like the skin, you know, tan Legging. bottoms and then like these bright red shoes from like Roger Vivier or something. And I said to my daughter, I was like, wow, look at her. Like that is quite an outfit. It looks like she should be in a magazine. She's like, mom, I don't think that would look so good on you. <laughs> and I was but like, I, you're like, I know. I, really like I know. Them. I wasn't going to wear them. I, I was just like admiring that somebody is like it's that. So- interesting you that you don't think of yourself as like a fashionista because clearly you're taking note. Clearly you are paying attention to and intrigued by. And I, I think you should push the boundaries. I think you should try a, a red, you know, gorgeous top and Roger Vivier flats and, you know, <laughs> see what happens. <laughs> okay. I, uh, yeah, I'm more constrained by the, you Needing know. to go places fast. <laughs> yeah. And, and just all the pieces of me that need covering at all times, you know, the, the, you know, the different, you know, (laughs) different shapes. I need to make sure I'm ensconced in to to look my best. But anyway. But by the way, that's like, that is, I mean, then we'll get off the topic of fashion, which was never our topic to begin with. But uh, but that's exactly why I think fashion needs a little, it needs to pay attention to exactly what you're describing because I feel the same way. Like I want clothes that support me. I don't look good if I just put on a bag. I can't do shapelessness. I know the features that I like to accentuate. I know the places I want to have like a really beautiful feminine silhouette and how to get there. But I haven't found a brand that like really consistently does that. And I am intrigued by the fact that like you would be more fashion forward, save for the fact that you want some structure and like, you know, coverage in places that it's important to have those things. So I'm 
I'm intrigued by this. I will be mulling on this. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Shoshana brand is very flattering. Have you? I do. I love her stuff. I love Shoshana. Actually, she's a friend, but I, I like very much what she does. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Okay. Cookbook. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about today? <laughs> so you have a new cookbook out, Daphne. Very exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Eat your heart um, out. <laughs> <laughs> um, eat your heart out. Okay. So do you actually, do, do, how did you come up with all of these different recipes? Do you make these yourself? Do you make the recipes? How often are you cooking versus like, tell me all about this. Yeah. Everything so start th- to finish. Th- so this book, and I don't know if people fully understand the process of writing a cookbook because you know, why would you, but this book took me almost five years to put together. And it's crazy because you end up writing these recipes, testing these recipes, you know, over years and years and years. And in this case for, you know, those last five years, because I really wanted it to be something that like could be craveably clean because this book is 150 recipes free from gluten, free from refined sugar. It actually details and outlines the five day reset that I do five days on two days off as part of just like wanting to feel confident in my skin, get back in shape. I do it after babies. I do it after the holidays, even just for like a week or two to reset healthy habits. And that's why the the only sort of simple rules of the book are no gluten and no refined sugar, because I was finding when I felt like I was no longer making conscientious choices, I was making sort of convenience choices or habit choices, uh, addictive choices. It was around gluten and sugar. So those are the things that I'm not a dietitian. This is not like, you know, some, some theory of that nature. It is really just personal experience. These are the two things that I have trouble not getting addicted to. And when I need to reset, these are the things I need to shy away from. But the five days on, two days off piece was fully me because people who follow me on Instagram or TikTok or wherever know how I eat and see see me on TV. I'm all about delicious food. First and foremost, that has to be the case. I adventure in life and explore life and, and, you know, feel the tactileness of life through food. And I was not willing to give that up, even in an effort to get feeling good in my skin again and, and feeling like I fit in my clothes again. And I feel like anybody can do anything for five days and having those two days off really gives you that break. Uh, It's like a mental break that you need. So you never feel like you're giving up experiences you want or can't go out to dinner and have a gorgeous meal and eat dessert and all the rest. And it allows it to be really sustainable too. So like after childbirth, I'll I'll do this for a couple months on end, five days on, two days off. But after the holidays, I'll do it for a week or two just to, you know, get back to my good, healthy habits. But I, I lived in it for those last five years because I wanted to really make sure they would be craveably clean recipes I would want to return to over and over again, but also practical enough that busy people could really make them happen. And I think that was really a powerfully uh, like motivating feature of this book was yes, creating a reset for people who love to eat like me, but also to make it, to make healthy living feel less like work. I think a lot of the time we fall into this, like it's all or nothing. Either you have to give up everything or like you might as well not do it at all. And I, I really feel like humans don't stick with anything like that. It has to be easy. It has to be fun. It also has to be something that you feel like you're getting more than you're giving up. And and with that in mind, I really wanted it to be like, are there ways you can make these recipes totally personalized and make them your own and go over the top for sure. I wanted to make it so that like these recipes are supposed to be confidence boosting. They're supposed to get you in the kitchen with something delicious and celebratory and healthy and nourishing and give you a a starter package to then grow and build from and personalize and make your own. And I think that piece of it is is hopefully to get people on board with the idea that this is not off limits. This is not something that's going to feel like another job. This is just a way for you to feel how good it feels to give your body clean fuel and feel great in your skin and feel like you're doing something really good for yourself, which I know, you know, as a mom and I'm, you know, escaping into the world of books and finding those places where you're, where you're feeding yourself something for pleasure, you know, pleasure as a woman and as a mom and, and, and continuing to grow and continuing to learn like that is something so powerful and fundamental to me. And I think food is very common in that, in that way. It's like giving yourself this priority and, and taking good care of yourself that filters into the rest of your life. I've, I've seen that to be so true. I love that. I love that attitude and framework. You know, so many healthy eating plans point you in one direction without that recognition that like, well, what about the fact that, you know, when I take a bite of whatever, I I get so much pleasure from that bite. Like sometimes I'm like, maybe I get more pleasure out of food than other people. <laughs> but you know, that's how I'm I like, feel. Oh, this is so good, you know. <laughs> but you're exactly the person like me that like I was writing this book for because I, I sometimes wonder, I'm like, I mean, I literally, I love 
going to farmer's markets. I will travel just to see ugly lemons that taste better than other <laughs> lemons, you know? Like, and I, and I don't want to rob myself of like that memory bank of wonderful food experiences. And I knew there had to be a way that people like us could still have those, have that priority around delicious eating and still fit in our clothes, which we should be allowed to do both of those things. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, as we're recording this, Passover recently ended and, yeah. you know, you have to cut out like whole groups of food, right? And I'm like, maybe I should just make this my thing. This is like the Passover, you know, because you can still eat some, you can eat like sweet potatoes and all those yummy things, but you're just not eating baked goods. And I'm like, but maybe one or two days a week. And then I'm like, okay, she's already figured this whole system out. <laughs> you know? Well, I, I don't think it's anything like revolutionary in that way of, uh, you know, I, I think that there's that 80-20 rule has been circulating around for a long time because there is real value in giving yourself a break, not just from a from a mental standpoint of like, let me get my head around making great choices these five days of the week. And then, you know, having the freedom to eat whatever I want on these other two days. And usually for me, that's the weekend. But I do think what I hoped was really going to be novel about this book is like, people know how I love to eat quote unquote normally and what, and the ways that I put a preference on food and how I like to travel on my plate and bringing in some of those, you know, exotic inputs or, or some of the heritage that I have and some of the ways that I've you know, traveled to eat and things of that nature and really simplifying it and giving you a way to like travel without ever leaving home and, and do it in a, in a nourishing way that still, that doesn't sacrifice the pleasure component. Like I am I am very much an and not or person. I want wellness and pleasure in every bite. If it was just pure wellness, yeah, great. Go suck down some psyllium husks and like leave me alone. That's not that's not <laughs> what this is. <laughs> so I, I appreciate that that I feel like I found my kindred spirit. No, in that seriously. Way. I am yeah. like, I'm like, I am your hundred percent your target audience. Like <laughs> It's, it's it's a great fit. So what did you make for breakfast this morning? Like, do you always pick from this or do you eat on the go or is it too early there? And no, it, it's, it's nine 30 here, but I haven't actually had breakfast yet. I am, I am slugging down my Americano. I know I, I, for breakfast, I usually like when I'm really on the run, I'll grab a piece of, um, gluten-free bread with as like a slick of almond butter. But my, my choice for breakfast, things that I love to eat is a loaded scramble with tons of green veggies. Like this, there's a recipe in the book, um, my spicy broccoli and feta scramble that I say my, but it's my husband invented it and I've just <laughs> taken it on as my own. All good. It's, it's my favorite. It's he put, um, he was like crazy. It was almost like he put a Greek salad in an omelet and I was like, this is the most delicious thing. So he does, well, broccoli is different, but he does broccoli, pepperoncini peppers, bell peppers sometimes, still throw in some like other spicy peppers if we have them around, feta cheese and and dill and scramble it mm. in with this gorgeous egg mix. And I, I think getting veggies at breakfast and eggs is what like what really fills me up and keeps me going. But I also recognize people want just like a carby, delicious thing sometimes. So the banana pumpkin muffins in the book are one of my absolute favorites. They are the love child of pumpkin pie and banana bread. So imagine the, that like wonderful density and moistness of pumpkin pie. So the muffin doesn't crumble and like fall apart. It really, and I put pumpkin in the mix, obviously, but then tender light with oat flour and almond flour. And it's just delightful. It's such a yummy blend. Um, and there's magic pancakes, which are literally mashed banana, oatmeal, yogurt, and eggs. My kids devour those. So there's a lot, there's like the range of, there's a hummus bowl. I know, blow in mind, savory <laughs> breakfast. Um, those are like a bu- examples, all of them of, well, the, the baked goods take about 10 minutes to prep and then like half an hour to cook. But the scramble things like, and the toast, obviously, things like that are sub five minutes. And well, the chopping, it depends how long it takes you to cut things. I like to chop, I chop pretty quickly, but I also like to chop a lot of things in advance. And then that way I can like an omelet bar and you can just kind of scoop things into the scramble and be done. But I I do, I find breakfast. I'm not, I unfortunately have never been someone who could really get by on the intermittent fasting thing. I like really need breakfast. So... <laughs> Oh, I, I will have something of those selections today after we chat. I have failed intermittent fasting many times. Um, yes. Like this is this is not working for me. But I did read some article this week or somewhere in the Times or the Journal or something about how maybe the benefits have been completely overstated for intermittent fasting. And I was like, aha. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Well, you know what I think all those things, cause, you know, nutrition and, and dialogue around like what's good, what's bad, what's in, what's out changes all the time, which I think is part of what feels so overwhelming when people do set out to create a healthy lifestyle for themselves is they're like, where do I even start? It feels like everything's conflicting and everybody has their own like special thing, this, that, the other. And 
A, one size does not fit all. And that's why I think some people have seen crazy, amazing success from intermittent fasting. And it just, I know for my own self, it really sets me up in a bad, uh, in a bad way. Um, but I also think that it's part of why I wanted in Eat Your Heart Out to have rules, quote unquote, that again, I, I very much am clear. These are specific rules to me, but I have found that they are very widespread in that, in, in that gluten and sugar can be very habit forming and, and also very delicious and very easy to find. So therefore they are the things that oftentimes trip a lot of people up, but by simplifying those rules. So on these five days on, you're not having gluten, you're not having refined sugar. I limit my dairy. Um, and then I take the weekends off. Those are the four sort of rules to keep in mind by simplifying them. You don't have to think about them all the time. And I, I really feel like nothing ruins my joy in food faster than making it math, like making it something where I have to think about it all the time and consciously make the choice all the time, because I want to be able to relax and enjoy. And when I, when the rules are very simple, I find that I actually am able to focus much more on the abundance on like everything that is in play, everything that I can choose from, as opposed to like cataloging, going through all the things and wondering if something's inbounds or out of bounds. So I found that to be super effective, but it doesn't surprise me. And I think there will always be conflicts around like what works for some people and what works for others. Cause we're, we are all very unique. <laughs> very true. Yes. Oh my gosh. I counted points for seven years or something in, in a former life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I was well, much you know, younger. But I, but I, but it's interesting. I'm assuming you're referencing WW yes. um, and I'm, I'm an ambassador for them and have been for the last two and a half years. And I, I'm actually putting out sometime this week a full uh, grid of the point values of every recipe and eat your heart out because I have a lot of people oh gosh, who are asking amazing. for that, which is I'm so gr- I'm so um, glad to be able to do that because a lot of these recipes were exactly what I've been eating doing WW and they're both look they're both tools that you use to again keep yourself accountable and keep yourself feeling supported like the community in WW I find is out of control yes. wonderful and. Again, more information. I'm a nerd. I like information. I feel more, I feel safer and more protected and more like I have multiple layers of security and safety net when I have more information. So there are tools that I use in tandem. And so many of these recipes are really great. uh, You know, if you are counting WW points, I was actually a leader. I'll have you know. (laughs) I totally, I, by the way, I could totally see like the level of your, your, brilliant way of finding motivation. I can totally see working in that way. Oh my gosh. I I was so on the bandwagon. I was like, you know, everyone I knew was losing weight for a while. It was like amazing. (laughs) Yes. Well, but it's amazing. I mean, that's, that's like the nerd in me was so compelled to sign up to WW largely because of that. I was like, millions of people have found the system works because it's science-based. It's not like gimmick. So I I love to hear that. Yeah. So funny. Tell me about your reading life. Like, what do you like to read? Okay. So this is part of why I was so excited to talk to you because I feel like I, I have, uh, my children are eight, six, four, and two. And for the longest time, I literally did not feel like I cracked a novel or a book for pleasure reading. And it upset And even, even before kids, like I feel like in college, you're all about work and party and you're not, you know, pleasure reading as much as I wish I had taken advantage of the time I had that. And then you get out of college and you're like full into career mode and then kids. And I mean, I just feel like I lost track of the time to really make that a preference. And I just start, I'm, I'm tempted to go get it from my bedside table. Cause it's hilarious. My dog got a hold of, I'm reading this series that that TikTok recommended to me. That's called, okay. Like, a, that's okay. <laughs> um, a court of th- thrones and roses. A C O T R is what people call it, but I'm in the second one for now. And it is so good. I love fantasy. I love like, you know, created worlds and I love Harry Potter. I love, I love sci-fi. I love Dune. I love all those things. So there is something like wonderful about this book. I'm really enjoying it. And I read like 10 minutes a night, not a lot, but I, I, it relaxes me. And I'm so grateful to get to find that again in my life. Um, but I'm so curious, like what your recommendations would be and, and how you find time for it, because it is, it's really, it's crazy how much your day goes flying by and, and how much I was craving. I, I, um, I listen to a lot of books on tape on, or on Audible, where that's really where I read my like nonfiction books. And I, it's crazy how much I was craving, not just creative, like purely pleasure experience um, of reading, but also like new learning. I really was hungry for to be shared with and to have my cup filled up again. So I was, I was really happy to get to find that habit back. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I feel like, especially when you're in it with the kids, your your brain can sort of atrophy a little bit, right? But you know, because exactly, you're, you're exactly. so focused, right? You're 
so focused. My kids are a little older now. I have twins who are almost 15 and then I have eight and, and seven behind me, this little guy. But yeah, I mean, I, I love finding time in the stolen moments of the day. I mean, sometimes I'm just walking from one kid to another, or I have to run to a doctor's appointment, or I'm waiting and I'm always like, am I using this time? Could I use this time differently? Do I really want to spend 20 minutes on Instagram now? Or, (laughs) and and sometimes I do. I mean, you know, I do have my alert every day. Like when I've reached an hour on Instagram, it's like time to get off. Very good. I think it's it's really, or at least I I know my cooking video first before you jumped off. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, but I think it's, you know, and, and also like you at night, I read I, every night before I go to bed. Well, I find like just by virtue of carrying this book around and it's like this thick, I am, I feel really compelled to crack it open in those down to in-car pickup lines or yes, like exactly. waiting at the airport or whatever, when it's so easy to break out your phone and scroll or, you know, make phone calls or answer emails or whatever, which I probably should be doing also. But I, it's like working out. You know, I, I got to this place where I recognized in myself, I would, I was feeling if I couldn't work out for half an hour or an hour, like it wasn't worth doing. Mm -hmm. And I really just did not believe people who were like little bits really add up. And until I started doing it, and I really, I just committed to like 10 minutes in the morning, right when I woke up, which we all have time for to just do like a really quick hit routine and it gets your blood pumping and it, it, you, it's crazy how much that like serotonin dopamine hit happens just by committing to showing up for yourself in that way and and actually doing it like the follow through of that small goal that you set for yourself. I find I take on my whole day so differently when I have that momentary, like just burst of energy and cleaning the, you know, detoxifying and just cleaning your system out to get ready to go and take on the day. And the same is true of reading. Like, yes, maybe it's only 10 minutes of reading time, but you get you feel you feel fueled up and filled up in a different way than you do when you've just kept you know putting it. it's that input before output cycle that I think is sometimes we we don't remember to to pay attention to how much different the whole how much more efficient the whole day can feel or how much more productive or happier the whole day can feel just by starting slightly slower by stealing those first ten minutes of the day or ten minutes throughout the day. Yes, yes, that. <laughs> That's what it is. I, I I feel like I say that every day. Like the doses, the 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 blast of of what you get when you're inside someone else's mind. Like the magic that's just like sitting in all these books, waiting. Like you just open it up and you're thinking someone else's thoughts. It's like crazy. <laughs> hey, I love I love that. You're so right. You do. You like leap inside their brain. You get to yeah. have. How do you find things that you love to read? Like do you go and wander little bookstores? Do you especially children's books? I I see that you've you know, obviously, yeah. You know, been, been in Princess that world. Charming. Princess <laughs> Charming. But I find I find it so hard to find kids' books that I love, and the message is really important. And I remember when I when my oldest Philomena was born, when she was about two, I found like a, a couple of different books that I loved, and we just ended up reading those over and over and over again. So I would love to know how you find the ones that you love, besides writing them. <laughs> Besides writing them. Yeah. I mean, you only really need this one that I wrote. Yeah. Uh, no. Uh, luckily, I get sent all these books now uh, for my podcast. So yeah. I am lucky. But I will say I'm always taking the kids to bookstores for various events. And what appeals to them ends up being the ones that we read. Even even now, I'll show them the catalog. I'll get pitched from like young readers at blah, 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 publisher. And I'll say like, which one of these looks good? And those are the ones I'll get. Because, you know, it has to be something organic to them. In a way, I think. Of course. No. So, I, I, but but yes, I, bookstores. I love indie bookstores and browsing and wandering. And also they're finding a lot of stuff at school that they come home and say that they want us to read. And they'll say, you know, we're reading this. Like, could we buy a copy of whatever? Like, sure. It's, it's the book fair at my kid's school today, randomly. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and, uh, and it makes me so happy because I do worry sometimes that like, like when I was little, my mom would take us to Barnes and Noble. We would be there for hours. I remember like just playing in those aisles and like they, you know, Barnes and Noble set up those little like, like reading nooks for kids and stuff. My grandma too, we would go, my grandma, we have to go in. My grandma literally will, will, I'm like, you, she'll carry 20 books out of Barnes and Noble to like ship home to herself when we're on vacations and stuff or like little, you know, little so beautiful sweet. independent bookstores. And I, I want that for my kids so bad because you're absolutely right. It's a, it's an escape and it teaches you to think differently. And it like, you're in someone else's reality all of a sudden. It's I, 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 you're, you're inspiring me to commit even more to this thing that I was desperately feeling I needed in my life and that my kids need in their lives. 
Well, you are inspiring me to eat cleaner and uh, not feel restricted and enjoy all these delicious dishes, which I am going to like run downstairs to try to whip up. So thank you. (laughs) Can I tell you one recipe that I, so in addition to the the, the breakfast ones we chatted about, that's really important about this book. Two things. Number one is I did, I really, and I feel like, you know, if you're like me and you sit and you work at a desk sometimes, or you're, you know, yes. you're around your house a lot where it's very tempting and easy to snack and things of that nature. I really wanted to make sure that this book met people where they are. And so, yes, you are human. And that therefore, when you're eating clean, you may still crave snacks. You may still crave dessert. So I really wanted to be able to actually have answers to those questions too when they're when people are going through their day. Um, so there's a whole chapter in the book about snacks, which I am going to tell you about now, right the second. My nori popcorn I'm obsessed with. This is like a salty, crunchy, spicy uh, mixed popcorn with um, sesame seeds, toasted nori, and chili flake. Yeah. And then sweet and spicy nuts. And then for dessert, chocolate medjool date cake and this, this yeah. banana brulee. Okay. Yeah. This was the craziest thing. I literally just had some coconut sugar and I sp- I like rubbed the bananas with a little uh, coconut oil, sprinkled the coconut sugar on top and put them under the broiler. And you get like the sweetest, stickiest, like banana pudding with a crunchy sugar top layer. It's out of control. Delicious. It's oh my so gosh. Good. <laughs> okay. You, you've made my day. I am like going to be so well fed. I'm very excited. Yay. I could talk to you all day. Thank you so much for coming on. I hope we continue this in some way, shape or form. Me too. Um, I will be shopping from your, from your <laughs> site from now on. Oh, thank um, you. Zibby. I'm so. going out to order prin- hashtag princess charming right now. <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank so you. much. Hi, I'm Zibby Owens, and you're listening to the award-winning podcast, Moms Don't Have Time to Read Books. If you like this podcast, you will love my new anthology called Moms Don't Have Time to Have Kids. Check it out, and you'll hear from 49 authors about all sorts of things moms don't have time to do. All the authors have been on this podcast. Also, check out my TikTok, at with Zibby and Tracy, my other podcast, Sex Talk with Zibby and Tracy. Check out Moms Don't Have Time to Write on Medium. And of course, my new publishing company called Zibby Books. And now back to our daily author interview site and a quick hello from some of my kids. Hi. Hi. Hello. Enjoy the show. 